Hello sweet friends and welcome back to our kitchen. Today we are making everyone's favorite game day appetizers and I've got three great recipes to share with you. You'll have to tell me down in the comments who you are cheering for in the Super Bowl or are you just there for the snacks? I'm just here for the snacks, okay? <laughs> First, I'm gonna take you guys back to last night to share one of the easiest appetizers with you. Okay, we are starting off with literally the easiest recipe of all time. Now you can do Ritz crackers, you can do like the townhouse crackers, whatever cracker you want. We're gonna do the Ritz garlic butter, is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. They are so good. That's just gonna give it a little extra flavor. So you'll need your cracker of choice some brown sugar, some bacon, and some cheese. I'm gonna do this Colby Jack because I have it and I've obviously used a little bit of it. Uh -huh. You could also do like some sharp cheddar would be delicious as well, whatever cheese you wanna do. But these are going to be so scrumptious and like sweet, salty, savory, all the things. I didn't know there was cheese involved with this one. There's cheese involved. There's always cheese involved when it comes to the bunkies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, first thing we're gonna do is just take our bacon and we're gonna cut it into like little, um, how do I say it? Like little square pieces that will fit on the cracker and then we're gonna cook it up. We're cooking the bacon before it goes in the oven? Oh yeah, she cooked the bacon. Um, then whenever we put it in the oven, we're just, it's just like melting everything together. Okay, well I got a question for you then. Okay. Can we cook the bacon in, in the strips in the oven and then break it into the sizes that we need? Okay, I was going to literally suggest this because Bacon in the oven is my favorite thing ever. Yeah. It tastes the best, but I was like, well, I don't know if we should do that. Yes, we can. Yeah, because then we don't have to deal with like trying to cut it when it's not cooked. Because yes. that's more, you know, complicated. 1,000% 1, 1, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. We're going whole package here? Whole package. Yeah, why not, right? well. You know, we can put it in the fridge, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh. What? Tomorrow is Sunday, and we can make like a little bacon, egg, and cheese before church. Yeah. Except we have no bread products. Mm. Mm -hmm. What? I just bought some canned biscuits. Or you can make your own homemade biscuits. Oh, Bunky. Now, what time are we waking up here? You gotta get up early. That's the question. I must say, that is some fine looking bacon mm -hmm. right there. Okay, this is going in the oven at 400 for how long, B? I think about 12 to 13 minutes. Okay. Yeah. It smells good. Everybody's favorite moment. <laughs> The removal. Oh, it looks perfect. A beautiful bacon. Oh my gosh. My mouth started watering with it immediately. Mmm. That looks amazing. Beautiful. Yes. Now, I will say, it did take longer than 12 to 13 minutes. How long? I gave, I gave 15 to 16. Oh, okay. 400 for 15 minutes then. <laughs> yeah. Would be the perfect. Okay, I'm gonna pull this off and then kind of let it cool for just a second. Okay, I'm like mid getting ready. We're going to dinner with our friends tonight. So this is like our little appetizer. So ignore the fact that I'm like halfway ready. <laughs> We're not. This recipe actually calls for like shredded cheese. We're basically making little like Ritz cracker bites with bacon and brown sugar and cheese. And so you're supposed to put like shredded cheese on there, but Bunky doesn't want to dirty up the cheese grater nope. for just a little bit of cheese. So his idea is that we just cut it super, super, super thin because honestly it's easier to just put a thin slice of cheese on there anyway. Yeah, so that's I, th what I'm doing. I think for the purposes of placement of the cheese. It would be cheese. easier. Yeah. yeah. Well, that one is good. That's, that's how we want it. That's the goal there. Or if y'all want to just do shredded cheese, you know by all means. <laughs> How many of these little, uh... Well, we're just gonna do a couple because it's just us. How many of these crisp birds of joy are we having? Ooh, I like the way you said that. Bonky, that's what we're gonna call them. Mm -hmm. Crispers of joy. Over here we have our little baking sheet. So I'm gonna turn my cracker kind of like upside down. You think or should be on this side? i go that side up. This side up? Okay. We'll just lay all of our little crackers out. Benefit oh. of cooking bacon in the oven. Oven's oven, already ready oven's to go. Oven's already ready to go. That's actually very this smart. This is like bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Man, you were on the money, Bonky. Bonky, that is perfect. That turned into four beautiful cuts. Okay, so just add your piece of bacon to the top of your cracker. Okay, now take your little spoon of brown sugar and just kind of put just a little pinch on top of each one. A sprinkle. Just a sprinkle. Oh my gosh, you see the way it's like melting into that bacon? Oh my goodness gracious. 
This is bananas. It is. I told y'all these were so easy. So now this is going in the oven at 350 for 15 minutes and then these will be done. This is beautiful. Oh my goodness. Look at. <gasps> Look at how that cheese browned. Yeah. Mm. Bunky. And those Ritz crackers got like so toasty. Yeah. Wow. And now that little like extra bit of bacon cook just absorbed into those things. Yes. Oh my gosh. There's a close up for y'all. Oh my word. The bacon got like even more crispy. Yeah. <laughs> and it was also slightly protected by brown sugar and Ooh! cheese. I kind of love like your idea of doing the cheese better. Cause I think if you did this shredded, it would be like such a mess. But mm -hmm. this like actually makes it the perfect little bite without like there being. It's not like all uh, yeah. globby and all over the place. Yeah. And it was so much easier to like place it and put it on there. I agree. I like your technique better. Cheers. Toast. A little brown sugar sweetness. Bunky. The brown sugar is my favorite part. Mm-hmm. You know what I thought about doing? What? If you say barbecue sauce, I will die. No. That would be good though. Because I thought about barbecue sauce. I thought about just the slightest little sprinkle of cayenne. Mmm, that would be so good. Got your sweet, a little hot, a little savory. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. That is good. Another thing too I thought of a second ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> to help, because you know this is like, like a, a party appetizer, right? Uh-huh. You know, you can really like cook your bacon in the oven the day before, slice your cheese up the day before. Yeah. Then all you gotta do is the assembly part and then you got these like put together in like 20 minutes instead of, you know, That's so not, not that cooking the bacon and cutting the cheese took very long, but you know, to alleviate stress, help yourself with your prep. So good, so smart. Okay, let me tell you what I think. The brown sugar on these, amazing. I feel like they didn't need as long to cook. Don't you? I thought they could have come out like maybe three or four minutes sooner. Yeah. But that's just my preference. Kind of reminds me of a pig in a blanket. Oh, okay, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, you're right. It really does. If it crescent rolls the cheese. I think, too, a lot of, yeah. The pork, yeah. Um, I think more brown sugar would have been. Me, too. Like a little bit more brown sugar. Go a little heavy on the brown sugar if you ask mm -hmm. me. Okay. So delicious, so easy. Next time we're gonna tweak them to like our liking, and I feel like they'll be like even better. But these were very, very good. Now for this next recipe, we are going to make some mini cheeseburger sliders on toothpicks using tater tots. Like y'all, this is my love language. I'm so excited. Like you can find me devouring every single one of these, okay? <laughs> if I'm invited to your party, this is what I'm eating. Now, if you have regular tater tots, by all means, you can use those. But I thought that these like crispy crowns, they're kind of like the Chick-fil-A hash browns that they serve in the morning, would be even better because they're flat. So this is like acting as our bun. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven. And you can also put these in the air fryer, which I was gonna do to kind of cook them faster. But since we're gonna use the oven for our next recipe, I figured I might as well turn it on and just cook these in there. Someone's sitting down on the job over here. <laughs> I gotta rest my feet. <laughs> I'm putting you to work. I was thinking I wanna make sure that we have a nice hot pan because I want to get a good little sear and crust I agree. on these little burgers. We were gonna uh, cook these on the Blackstone, but it's raining outside. Yeah. So change the plan. But we can do it inside. We can do it inside. <laughs> so we have our hamburger meat right here. Let me zoom y'all out. Truly hamburger meat. It is actually hamburger meat today, okay? <laughs> And we're just gonna go ahead and form all of our little patties. So these are gonna be bite sized. So you're basically just like forming a teeny tiny bite sized patty and then we'll put them in our pan and we'll season them with salt and pepper and cook them on both sides yeah. until they're. Now I am gonna um, <clears throat> make them pretty, they're gonna be small still, but they're gonna be pretty flat and, and you know round because they're gonna, I'm sure they're gonna draw up quite a bit and I don't wanna end up with a meatball. This is coming from the, uh, Excellent. Grill master. Yes. 
And I actually used some of that hamburger meat the other night. I cooked like a little hamburger patty and it splattered everywhere. So I'm going to use, um, I keep wanting to call this a Dutch oven. I don't know what you call it. But anyway, y'all know the pan that my mom got me for Christmas because I think since it has sides all around it, it'll be less mess. Since we still have the manual over here, I thought I'd, you know, look it up so we know what to refer to it as. Yeah, tell forward. us what it's called. It is, in fact, described as an enameled cast iron brazier. Wow, I'm gonna start calling it my brazier. My brazier. <laughs> Come get my hamburgers cooked in my brazier, Bunky. Don't overwork the meat, friends. That's right. You think that's a good size? That's actually pretty perfect, probably. Yeah. And then we're gonna smush it down. And make sure in the center you, you know, kind of smush with your finger. The, the dent. Yes. I forget why we do that. It helps them stay flatter. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Bunky is um, so perfectly making sure each Perfect. square is the same size. Perfect portions. <laughs> <laughs> they look so good. We're just using the good old like Velveeta slices because that's what's going to be the most cheesy melty. Mm -hmm. so, melty gooey. And I feel like you, like the Perfect Cheeseburger has Velveeta slices if you ask me. Now this is how we're gonna get extra cheesy. We're popping a lid on for just like 10 seconds. And our little tots came out of the oven and they look so good, I gotta have one. Those are the best if you ask me. I'd almost rather have those than like regular tater tots. For, absolutely. They're so good. <clears throat> if you're gonna uh, put tots in front of me, those are the ones I want. Agreed. Whoa! I would say that is the perfect cheese melt. That is looking real pretty oh actually. Oh my gosh, okay, we gotta get these out. Okay, bunkies are getting fancy. I was like, hang on, let's put some lettuce down in our plate that we're gonna present them on. Now you can do like a whole entire little condiment tray. We're gonna keep it basic with just like ketchup, mustard, pickle, but you could do like relish, you could even make chili, and everyone can just kind of get a little bit of everything on their plate that they like on their burger. You could do like chopped onions, the whole shebang, mm, speaking okay? Speaking my language on that. You could just have a full on make your own mini cheeseburger bar if you wanted to, but we're just gonna do ketchup mustard pickles. <laughs> so we're gonna take our toothpick, we're gonna start with our little tater tot, and then our cheeseburger. Top it with a pickle, and then another <gasps> tot. How cute is that? I can't get over it. Give us another rotation. They're so cute! <laughs> That is like so precious, I can't even stand it. Are you leaving it on the pick or no? I'm removing it. You are? Yep, we're taking it off. Oh, I was gonna eat it on there. No, cause I think, you know, this is like two bites. Mm, yeah, so I'm, I'm just... Okay, I'll take it off. Ketchup, mustard. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. Let me tell you why these are so good. Tell me why. Tater tots. You get a potato with your cheeseburger mm -hmm. in the same bite. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. It's like having a, a burger with fries on it. It is. But this is the whole package mm -hmm. in, a, in a small little handheld bite. I love these. Very fun too. I think it would impress your, uh, mm -hmm. impress your guest. This is like one of my favorite recipes I've ever made mm -hmm. because of how cute it is. And it tastes amazing. These are scrumptious. The tastiest little cheeseburger. It comes in bite size. You can make a ton of them. They're very <coughs> easy. The cheese, the potato, the pickle, the burger with the, I mean, it, it's just so good. It's um, it's like a, a very basic and simple combination of things, but mm -hmm. all put together, so good. 
delicious. It's like if you want classic American little cheeseburger bites, this is the way to go. Okay, y'all have to try these because they're just so much fun. Now, for this next recipe, I saw this like as a little recipe reel on Instagram, and I said, y'all know I have to make this, okay? So it's like a creamy feta pepperoncini dip. Oh my goodness, like, I cannot wait. Now, there's only four ingredients, but I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> So you'll need your block of feta cheese, just like as if you were making the you know viral feta pasta. So block of feta, of course some pepperoncinis, a little bit of that juice that's in there, some olive oil, and some Italian seasoning. That's really all you need. And we're just gonna bake this in the oven at 350 for like 20 minutes. But y'all know how I love Mississippi chicken, Mississippi pot roast, Mississippi anything. So I have this idea. What if I sprinkle just the tiniest little bit mm. of this au jus gravy mix on top the to give it that depth? The tiniest little bit. Tiniest little bit. Okay. Do you think I should or no? Tell me the truth. Let me think about it. We got feta, feta. pepperoncini, Italian seasoning. Yes. I don't know. You said no. I don't think so. Maybe How about we do not. this? We make it first. Okay. And then... I'll make it first regular. Yeah. But one day I'm trying it with this, okay? Because I'm thinking I could just make a Mississippi dip. Yeah, oh. Do you see what I'm saying? Like I said, oh. use the Italian seasoning. I think if you exclude the Itali Italian seasoning, then you can go au jus gravy in there. Well, I'm nervous, so I'm just gonna do it regular. But one day I'm gonna make my, my Mississippi. Okay? Your version. <laughs> my version. Okay. Now you talk about an easy recipe. This is like, not even two minutes to prepare and it just has to bake. Okay, and you can kind of do like as many pepperoncinis as you want. I'm gonna put a decent amount in there. Oh yeah. Cause it's a lot of cheese too. That'll kind of balance it out. And if you get a little juice, that's just extra like flavor and good stuff in there. It's, it's gonna help the uh, <clears throat> meltiness maybe. Yeah. That is a lot of pepperoncini. Okay, that's good, right? <laughs> yeah. Now we just drizzle this with olive oil. Just a little drizzle. That is plenty. Sprinkle with Italian seasoning. And bake. That's it. That's it. That's why I feel like my version would be better. <laughs> but I'm gonna let it be. Yeah, let it, let it be, baby. <laughs> you know how I always have to kind of go back and reread the recipe because sometimes, you know, I do. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't have to make any trips to the grocery store. Look, I already had everything. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> but I hope that you bake this at 350. It's actually at 400. So we just gotta turn that up a little Strike bit. It up. But you know what? It's been on for so long at this point. I bet it will like get there relatively fast. Once that's at 400, it bakes for 20 to 30 minutes. I just want y'all to know. I've been editing so that y'all can have this video today. And this man has cleaned our entire kitchen. Check that out. He already cleaned our pot we used. Tea pitcher. Wait, what did we say we're calling this? Uh, Brazen. A brazer. A brazer. He cleaned our tea pitcher. He wiped down all the countertops. He cleaned all the dishes in the sink. You're too good to us, Bunky. I did all right. You're so good. <laughs> He's been in here for about 20, 23 minutes. I gave it 23 at 23. Point. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Oh, it oh. looks so good. Now that feta is not going to like melt like you think. Like it's not going to... It's not a melty cheese, but it's going to squish around nicely. Right, but now that it's like warmed, it's very spreadable, if that makes sense. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, I'm going to put this in a bowl because you would eat it like a dip. I cannot wait to try this. Get it all, boo. Get Make it sure all. you get every last little bit. You left one. Uh-oh. Better get that, too. Okay, Bunky's making me take the first bite. I think you're scared of this recipe. Is I, that what it is? I had a minor sample, so I'm curious to see your reaction. You don't like it? No, I never said I didn't like it. I'm just saying. Uh-huh. That is the pepperoncini packs a punch. 
It's a wee bit spicy. Surprisingly, right? I never thought that like pepperoncinis were that spicy. I guess when they kind of bake a little bit though, maybe it like intensifies them. You're not kidding. That will wake you up. Now, let's all agree to the fact that Bunky and I like a little bit of heat. And I say that this is spicy. Like it definitely leaves a little bit of a lingering spice, but not overwhelming. And actually like once I finished it, it's almost like a vine vinegary hot. Which is my favorite. That's like Frank's yeah. red hot, you know? I actually love the heat. I feel like it's just the right amount. It's not like overpowering. Yeah. Like it's there, but it's not like, you know, let, unedible. Let me get another sample here. This is good. Maybe I was a little too scared of this at first. I think you were too scared. Mmm. It was actually very del like delicious. That's a nice combo. It is. Because the feta's kind of funky. The pepperoncinis. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, it's I wanna, actually very good. It's very good. I want to say this. The more olive oil that you put in this, and I don't like it, make it swim. Don't put like a ton. But the more olive oil, the more creamy this is going to be because the feta is kind of a drier cheese. Yep. So I think a little bit more olive oil makes it like Yeah. You better put a little bit more olive oil in there. Yeah. But this is... So tasty. I really like that actually. Me too. There's a nice change up. You know, you have all your standard dips and stuff that you get like at Super Bowl party or whatever. Yeah, this is one that no one will expect. Yeah. Very good. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Okay, so whether you're having a get together for the Super Bowl, a birthday party, or just because you want some delicious appetizers, I hope you will try these. You're going to love them. All three were so delicious and so easy. So I'll have all of them typed out or linked down below for you guys. Also, if you want more appetizer inspiration, you know I'm your girl. I've got tons of appetizer videos. So I will link those for you to watch next. Also, one of my very best friends, Amber over at Feeding the Birds came out with a Super Bowl appetizers video today as well. So I will link her video down below so y'all have all of the appetizer inspiration as always don't forget to subscribe if you're new give this one a thumbs up i love you so very much and i will see you in the next one bye y'all you know what else is strange what i went through a period of time in my life mm -hmm. where i was not a big fan of ketchup you did just recently over the past couple of months i've i've really come back into love with ketchup. Bummy used to never eat ketchup on his burger, and I'm like, mm -mm. why? It's so good. It's like required though with this little guy. Yeah, it is. So good. That is hilarious. You have been liking ketchup more lately. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I would like, um, I, th I think like if, if you do make this and put it out for a, you know, a bunch of people. Yeah. The, the finely like minced small onion. onion I knew you were going to say that. Would be really, like, it would really take it to another level, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.